Hey everyone, Tony Winston here for Jazz Piano College. I'm going to cover a song that I give to a lot of my students uh, fairly early on that are learning jazz and learning how to read charts. And this is a song called Black Orpheus. Um, it has another title, A Day in the Life of a Fool, and I think it's from a movie. Um, so let's take a look at it. And this is going to be, you know, kind of a beginner video, so I'm going to show you the chords and play the melody. And it's a Latin tune, so you don't have to swing the rhythm or anything. All right, so that's the very first part. And a lot of times when I'm teaching these, I'll have the student play the melody up an octave so we can get some nice chords right here in the middle of the piano where they sound the best. So it says A with a little dash after it. That means minor and you have to know this more or less from experience but a lot of times you can make that a minor seventh chord. Okay, It's a pretty easy chord. All white keys, A minor, and add a seventh. I should tell you that the uh, link down in the description will take you right to the chart of this song and uh, it doesn't take you to a website or anything like that. It just pops up on your screen there. You can download it. You can look at it, uh, whatever you want to do with it. It's free and uh, very easy to do. So I hope the link works. Now, if the measure only has one chord in it, I'm going to play it twice on the first beat. One, two, three, four, and. I'm going to play it on the first beat and the third beat. Now the next measure has two chords. I'll play the first one on the first beat. And it's a B minor seven, flat five. All right, now B, you have to find the fifth. All right, that's the fifth. And it's either a, a major or a minor, so let's make it a minor. And we're going to add the seventh, which is this note, and we're going to flat the five, which is that. And it's an easy chord to remember because it's all white keys. All right, so we just went from A minor to B minor seven flat five. And now we're going to do E7, and we're going to do it like this. We're going to lower both of these two notes by half step. So this one's going to go here, and this one's going to go there. And we'll have E7 like this. Now, if you took these two notes right here and put them down below, you have E, E major, and with this particular seventh, that makes it an E dominant seventh. Just written E seventh, usually. And we're going to ignore the flat nine. It's not that important. Okay, so that's our chord. But coming from this chord, it's easier to do it this way. Okay, and it sounds better, too. two, three. Next line. So let me explain that line a little bit. We were started on A minor. Another easy chord to remember because it's all white keys. D minor. And then our G7 is like this. But once again, it's easier to just move the top two notes down. They're not going to both be half steps this time. This one's going a half step. This one's going a whole step to G. And G7 is all white keys too, so... Sorry, uh... D minor, G7, and C major 7th. Now. There's three kind of seventh chords you really need to know. The major seventh, and it'll always say M-A-J. There are a few other symbols for it, like a little triangle or a capital M, but I prefer this C, M-A-J for major. All right, now, if it's a C7, just C and a seven, it means this seven, and we call that a dominant seventh chord. But it just says C7. And if it has C and a dash for minor, or C with a little m, or mi sometimes for minor, we make it a minor triad, and, and it's that seventh, okay? Now there's another chord like this, but uh, this is the minor seventh. So anyway, we're on C major seventh. I'll play this line one more time. And 
And here we have C diminished seventh, that little tiny circle. It's kind of a handwritten chart, so it's hard to see that, but uh, it means a diminished chord. And a diminished chord is built this way. You take the root, which is C sharp, and you go a minor third, which is this far, and you add another minor third. And you can add another minor third, and we call that the seventh, even though this distance is technically a sixth, but it's called a seventh for reasons that we don't want to get into now. All right, there's our chord, and it's easy to get to. You just low from C major, you just lower this one and raise the bottom one, and you've got this chord. Now, the next chord, A7 flat 9, if I added an A down here, I'd have A7 flat 9. So I'm not going to do anything here. I'm just going to play the same chord again and call it A7 with a flat 9. All right? And it just doesn't have the A in it, but uh, it, it's okay. You don't need it. On we go to D minor. We've talked about this chord, but this time we'll play it twice. And then G7. Twice the second uh, chord comes on beat three, which is where that little rest is. Now I played C major seventh. Uh, the book says C sixth. Either one sounds good, and they're very closely related chords, right? They both have the same kind of flavor. There, I did them both. And now we're going to F, and see my right hand is too low, you know, so I should be playing up here for now. And let's go to F major seventh. There's the F major. And a major seventh is just, uh, the seventh is located one half step below the root. This is the root, this is also the root. So, and if it was just F seven, it would be one more half step down there, but F major seventh is what we got. And here we're going to make a big jump up there to that B minor 7 flat 5 that we had back there in line 1. And we're going to invert this E7 like we did before. And then we've got just the chords. And actually, if you just move the top note there, this note is the flat 9 of E. Because look, if you, if you did an E major scale, there's the 9, and there's the flat 9, and it fits nicely onto that chord. So, you know, if you're uh, doing this one, you could just flat that note, and you have E7, flat 9. But this, this way is just as good. Okay, I'm going to play the first four lines again, then we're going to talk about the second four lines. And I did a little bit of improvisation. The best way to start improvising is just to mess around with the melody a little bit. And this song has some spots where the melody just sits there for a while. Like, look at the first line. Right here. You know, there's a lot of space to put in something if you want to. Okay, let's go on to the uh, next four lines because there's a little bit more interesting stuff going on here. Starts off the same way. Now, we go to an E minor 7 flat 5, and for this one I'm going to jump down here to root position, put the E on the bottom. We've got a minor triad and a seventh, but we're going to flat the five. So it looks like this. I'm going to do an A7 in root position. 
because I want my listeners to really hear that chord progression. So, again. And this next little symbol means do D minor again. I changed it to D minor sixth instead of D minor seventh, just to give it a little variety. And then on the next line, I'm going to move back to my D minor. But however, I'm going to play it up here, and I'll show you why. The next chord, it says D minor seventh. That would be adding a C on there, but it says... The slash tells you that the bass note should be a C. So we're going to add the C down below. And really, if I hold the chord, I could just add the C and it would sound pretty nice. And then see, if I go down one more note, hey, I've got the B minor 7 flat 5 chord. And then I'll do the E7, that inversion. And here on A minor, I'm not going to put a 7th on yet. Because the next chord is just like the, the last thing. It says add the 7, but the bass note should be the G. So let's, we'll add it down there. And you know, this is, this is a very common thing. You'll hear this a lot too. Right? What's, what song is that? It's like Stairway to Heaven. Um, And she's buying a stairway to heaven. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. That's our F major seventh. And then it's hard to see it on the chart. There's a, a G sharp there. And we're going back to B minor seven flat five. Now it's all white keys. I did a different inversion that time, but let me put it back up here. And then our E7. And then to turn the song around, we just do B minor 7 and E7 again, and that takes us back to A. kind of played too much of a line there. <laughs> Yet another inversion of that chord. <laughs> Sorry. And there is a little coda and everything, but uh, I don't think we have time to cover that in this, this particular video. Now, if you want the blues scale that I'm playing, and you might say, well, this song is not a blues, and you would be right, but the blues scale is a really important part of jazz, uh, whether it's a blues song or not. So it gives jazz part of that uh, part of that, I don't know, jazzy sound. <laughs> Another big part of the jazzy sound is a thing called the diminished scale. That was a little bit of it. I'll use one down here too. And that was my D minor 7 to G7 change. Right? Um, but if you're a beginner and you're just learning to improvise, I would advise you to just find the notes that sound good to you and, you know, do a lot of listening to all kinds of music. That'll put lots of melodies into your head. And then, you know, eventually they may not come out right away, but if you keep listening and, you know, trying to play what you're hearing in your mind, you will learn to improvise. Everybody can do it. 
Well, that's all for today, folks. If you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, the link is in the description. You could also uh, PayPal a few bucks to the channel if you like, to me, that is, and I'd appreciate that. Uh, but just a, a, a good thumbs up or a um, comment would be appreciated, and, uh, you know, share the video with your friends. All right, thanks a lot, everyone. See you again real soon.